Good morning, everyone. Hope this finds you all well today. I'm going to be reading today from Psalm 66, 8 to 14 in the ESV. And then I'm going to share whatever the Lord gives me to share. Okay. Uh, Psalm 66, 8 to 14. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Okay, so this is about, uh, a lot of it is about being tested and tried by God, uh, but it is also about uh, persecution. And, um, and so I wanted to read a few uh uh, just little blips of passages uh, where Jesus told us uh, what we should expect. In Matthew 5 to 10, he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, that's in 10 to 12, Blessed are you when others revile, revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. <clears throat> and then it goes on down. This one's in Matthew ten sixteen to 25, where he says, You will be hated by all by, for my name's sake, uh, that they will persecute you, they will uh, malign you. And then in Matthew 24, 9 to 14, it says, um, they will deliver you up to tribulation. You will be hated. Uh, and many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise. And then in Luke 6, 22 to 23, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your, spurn your name as evil. And then Luke 21, 12 to 17 but before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues. Um, and it talks you delivered, you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. John fifteen eighteen to twenty one. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And then in John 17, 14, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Okay. So I want you to know Jesus' words because what I'm um, sharing with you is uh, from the Old Testament and the Psalms. Uh, <clears throat> so you understand <clears throat> that if we follow Jesus Christ with our lives, that this is what we can expect. So this is not an unusual thing. If we are really walking in fellowship with our Lord in uh, walks of obedience and in uh, submission to the Lord um, and in holiness and righteousness and not in sin, uh, not in wickedness, um, and especially if we're sharing the truth of the gospel uh, in opposition to the lies that are being spread, and if we are exposing the lies for what they are uh, in, in, in comparison to the truth, uh, we aren't going to be very popular, you know. We aren't going to have a lot of people like us or being drawn to us or wanting to be with us, and in fact, we will be, we'll be, we will be hated and persecuted even within the church when I talk about the synagogues, you know. Well, for us, that that's the uh, gatherings of the church, or what is falsely called church, um, because uh, buildings are not the church. We are who believe in Jesus. You know, we're the body of Christ. We're the church. Um, so the church is not a place you go to. The church is us, you know. And then we go places, you know, where we can meet with other uh, Christians. Uh, 
<clears throat> which includes the internet or phone calls or text messages, you know, wherever you can gather with other Christians that for, for fellowship and teaching of the word and prayer and uh, for encouraging and uh, exhorting one another and even warning one another uh, regarding the, the warnings that are in the scriptures. Um, but uh, to, to tell people the truth so they can be prepared, you know, uh, because a lot of people are believing in Jesus or they think they're believing in Jesus and they think they just have a free ride to heaven and it's not going to cost them anything uh, and that things are going to go great for them. And that's not what the, the scriptures teach, you know. So um, anyway, we're to bless the Lord. Uh, we're to praise him uh, even in even in these difficult times and and he will uh keep our our feet from slipping provided that we cooperate with him you know he's not going to force uh, us to not do wrong uh but he will help us to not do wrong if we depend on him and rely on him and 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 ask for his help and uh put our trust in him and not not in ourselves and not in our flesh uh, and then <clears throat> we will be tested. The scriptures that teach that, and I didn't pull up those scriptures, sorry. Uh, but there's plenty of scriptures that t talk about us uh, being tested. And um, that, uh, like Hebrews 12 talks about uh, the Lord disciplines us for our good, you know, and he allows us to go through painful circumstances. Um, in order to um, mature us in the Lord, to help us to grow, to teach us perseverance, to teach us to rely on him and not on ourselves. I think that's in Second Corinthians 1. Um, but there's many passages, you know, that talk about uh, us being tested. And um, so we're going to go, we're going to go through persecution. We're going to go time, through times of testing to test our faith um, because that helps to strengthen us you know when our faith is tested you know it's either going to reveal that it's weak and we have some areas that need to be fixed or it's going to reveal that it's strong and it's going to make it stronger you know because every time we're tested we should get stronger in our in our walks of faith with the lord uh <clears throat> so anyway the lord you know he allows all these things to happen to us. They're they're part of, they're part of our walk of faith in Jesus Christ. They're part of what it means to follow Jesus Christ is to to share in in the fellowship of His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, you know, um, because uh, that is how <laughs> that's how we become like Him, you know, is through the things that we suffer and the thing and being tested and all of that. It helps us to grow in our walks of faith, helps us to draw closer to the Lord, or else it proves that, you know, we're not really committed to the Lord. And then many people fall away, you know, when they're tested because they decide that that's too hard. It's not what they think they signed up for, you know. And uh, that, like in the, um, the uh, parable of the sower. Uh, <clears throat> So anyway, you know, we're going to go through the fire. We're going to go through, uh, through, through floodwaters and uh, all different kinds of things. Um, but the Lord, if we're trusting in him and we're following him and we're obeying him, <clears throat> he will bring us through those times. He will help us, uh, you know, where it says he brought us to a place of abundance. And that's not talking, at least for us. That we're going to have, you know, riches and all that kind of stuff. But a place of spiritual abundance, you know, where we're going to grow in our walks of faith and become closer to the Lord and and, 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 and live more holy lives committed to the Lord and not not um, not for ourselves and, and like that. So those things, they're, they're painful. Uh, and, and especially when we're going through them, I mean, they're, they're really painful. It's easier to talk about them after the fact than it is, you know, when you're going through it, um, when you're going through the fire. Uh, but they're for our good, and good will come out of it in our lives. Um, and then it says, I will come into your house with burnt offerings. Now, we don't do burnt offerings. Um, I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. Now, <clears throat> when we believe in Jesus, uh, 
we make a commitment to him not only as lord of our lives and as our savior but as our husband you know so we we enter into a marriage contract uh with him it is a covenant a covenant relationship and a covenant you know it's a vow you know it's a vow it's a promise that that we that, uh, we are committed to jesus christ and to follow on him in obedience and and him being our lord and, and savior on, on us being his servants and his, his messengers and his witnesses and 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 that is not just you know what we're in trouble but there are times when we're going through through you know really difficult times like i said that, that uh, help us to grow closer to the lord and so in that sense you know we we might make <clears throat> we might make new commitments to the lord uh to to um uh, be closer to him, to walk closer to him, to to correct some things maybe that he needed to correct in our lives be, uh, when we went through this time of trouble. So anyway, uh, the whole encouragement here is, uh, you know, we're going to go through hard times. You know, if we're really following the Lord, we're going to be tested. You know, we're going to be persecuted uh, unless we're not following the Lord and we're just pretending we are that if we're really following him We are going to go through those times But that those times should help us to grow closer to the Lord to be more committed to him uh, <clears throat> and to To persevere and and to, to have a closer uh, walk of fellowship with him And so that's the encouragement from this passage today until the next time